Hello everyone, welcome to my final video of 2021. What a year it has been. Thank you so much for watching my videos, supporting this channel. I am so thankful and grateful for you. I uh, just really appreciate all the support. Uh, I do have one final time-lapse tutorial for the year, but before I get into that, I just wanted to quickly draw your attention to the paintings behind me. For quite some time, it's just been this eagle painting, and all of these pieces are my own artwork. Uh, but I recently put up these two smaller pieces because I wanted to have more artwork on the walls. Uh, but also, uh, the one over my left shoulder, the blue macaw, and the one over my right shoulder, the red cardinal, are available in my art shop on Redbubble, which I have linked in the description. So if you're interested in checking out these two, those two pieces, as well as the other pieces of art I have available on there, it's a really great site. You can just get plain art prints or framed art prints, but there's also other items on there that you can get the artwork printed on, uh, depending on which work it is and which item it fits on. So some of them may you have a mug or a phone case or a notebook, a blanket, different things like that. So I'd love it if you went and checked it out. Uh, uh, that would be very grateful. So um, and Redbubble is just a very cool site, it supports all kinds of independent artists and designers. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this final tutorial of 2021. So I'm starting out with a wet wash on this paper and just laying in watercolor paint over the wet page. So you start with just a clean brush and water and then you add in very light uh, kind of background washes that will blend into each other and you want to make sure that they completely dry like this. So there actually were several days that I just left that on its own. I took the page out of the notebook, <clears throat> excuse me, and after it was completely dry, flattened it for a few days and then came back to it. And you can see that that background is completely dry and I just secured it to the work surface, the paper with some blue tack on the back to help the corners and edges adhere to that wood panel on there. And now I am still using the sort of calligraphy brush and just going in with more very light washes as the background hints of branches that are happening. I do work from reference photos and the particular photo I used for this one is linked in the description. It's from unsplash.com as are almost all the reference images I use since they're copyright free. But if you want to see the original photo that I took inspiration from, you can uh, click the link in the description. But otherwise, I'm just going in and using this very deep sepia tone for the branches and using a lot of the time the tip of this brush. It comes to a pretty fine point since it's a calligraphy brush to fill in the details of those branches. And going in really and just kind of laying in wherever the branches felt right, trying to uh, uh, stick with the way the reference image was, but not being too concerned with having it be exact since I wasn't, since I didn't have a drawing on here. This was initially going to be a 10 minute painting. And then I realized that the branches, if I wanted to have the type of detail that I was looking for wouldn't have have been ideal. So I just went ahead and painted until I felt like it was done. It was about a 25-30 minute painting altogether, not including the time to dry that first layer, that background, kind of blurry. I'm imagining it's probably a sort of mountain scene in the background, um, just based on the reference image. Uh, but so much of this is just really heavy paint. And then for the branches that kind of fade out of focus, I think because of either mist or the way where the photograph was focusing, I just make the paint very light and watered down and kind of go over it with a clean wet brush to blur the edges. And sometimes as you've seen, I've been using that little uh, cloth to blot up some of the paint if it gets too dark or to sort of smudge the edges as well. 
And so it's nice to have that contrast between the very sharp in focus branches in the front and then the out of focus kind of blurry light colored branches in the background. So that's what you saw me first fill in was you see even some berries in the background as well on that top branch <laughs> that's back there just sort of faded and blurred. In addition to the sepia brown that I'm using, I'm also using quite a bit of black. It was, the branches are so dark. I just started using uh, some black as well to get it very dark, saturated and shadowed. And then going in with cadmium red medium for these berries and not spend, I could have spent a lot more time on them if I wanted them to be even more realistic, but uh, kind of trying to leave a couple of spots where it looks like maybe there were highlights so it's not just a pure red dot. And then also going in on some of them and adding some of that dark brown as a shadow so that they have a little bit of dimensionality. But this was, uh, I made the berries just a little more abstract on this one just for time's sake. And I think it worked out okay. I mean, there's sometimes if you want to spend more time on something and be a little more painstaking you can absolutely get a little more detailed but for this I felt like the more suggestion of the berries the color and the general shape worked out well there you see I'm adding some of the dark brown and also trying to sometimes in some of the spots adding just little itty bitty uh, stems that were connected to the branch That's really most of what it was just filling in those sharp branches i add a signature at the end here and that was basically it and here it is close up so you get a little better view of it Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Until my next video, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. God bless, and I'll see you soon in 2022.